A lot of the talk about the closure of the Rose Art Museum on the Brandeis campus is about works like these. Valuable masterpieces by 20th century artists such as Liechtenstein, Picasso, Warhol, de Kooning, and Rauschenberg. After the museum closes permanently at the end of the summer, many of these works will be put on the auction block to make up for shortfalls in the university's budget, which has been stung by a drop in fundraising prompted by the current economic turmoil. For local artist Janet Shapiro, the president of the Artist West Association, the closure sends a dangerous message that could affect other arts institutions. This quick fix of selling off an entire collection and closing an art museum may bring about um, a windfall of money, but it, it sends a message that we don't care about art. Art is dispensable. What makes the decision unusual, and what has shocked many in the art world, is that the entire collection of the rose will be deaccessioned or permanently removed. There are approximately 6,000 works in the collection, 85% of which are gifts. Estimates of the total value vary, but some have placed it as high as $350 million. Many of the artworks were donated long ago, when they were worth significantly less, with the understanding that they would remain in the museum. According to the museum's director of education, Emily Mello, this work by artist Robert Rauschenberg was acquired in the early 1960s for about $5,000. Today it's worth millions and it could wind up in private hands, never to be seen again by the public. Mello says that the museum staff, including director Michael Rush, had no input in the decision and were notified hours after the announcement by the university's trustees. Brandeis students received an email about the closure on Monday, and some have organized a silent vigil outside the museum for Thursday night. It seems like it, it happened very quickly without uh, you know, any consultation and possibly the way I see it, without the best judgment. Advocates of the closure have pointed to low foot traffic, poorly attended exhibitions, and insurmountable budget shortfalls. But for Waltham High School art teacher Ginger Kanierny, who relied on the museum for educational outreach programs, the visitor traffic is only a small part of the museum's activities. If kids in school are exposed to realistic representational art, but aren't exposed to abstract art, and just the visual impact of seeing like a Morris Lewis color field painting filling the room with these veils of color. There's nothing beats seeing that in person. A little, you know, uh, two inch by one inch reproduction in a book or PowerPoint doesn't do it for the kids. So to have that resource in Waltham was really tremendous. The story is far from over. Before any art can be sold, the university administration must comply with the state district attorney's regulations about the resale of art gifts while alumni have already created two popular online petitions to prevent the closure. But for now, the shock is still very real. For Waltham News Watch, this is Chris Wangler.